It's a time of change here at Star Citizen. The Frankfurt office has moved into their new digs. The Wimslow office prepares to migrate to Manchester starting next week. Our CitizenCon presentations are looming just nine days away. And much of the focus of our development teams at present is in preparing for the upcoming Alpha 318. With persistent entity streaming that serves as the foundation not only of server meshing in Alpha 4.0, but everything else in the persistent universe as well. And since Alpha 318 is now scheduled to arrive in the first half of November, and ISC enters its regularly scheduled hiatus the next few weeks, we thought we'd take the opportunity to try something new with our last episode of the quarter. A follow-up to each of the 318-related feature segments that we've done this quarter, looking at how they've continued to grow since we last showed them to you, answering your questions that you had after watching, and rolling them all into one big supersized report that we're calling the ISC follow-up. Because we're, we're really, really good at naming things. Enjoy. So since updating you on the rivers earlier this year, I've been focusing on the visual quality of the rivers themselves, so that when you explore them, they are looking better than ever. I think the biggest visual change I've introduced to the rivers is the new cliff spawn points. Previously, where we had steep edges along the river, we just had the terrain texture that we get on steeper parts of the terrain. But I wanted to kind of increase the visual fidelity of this by spawning cliff meshes along the edge of it. So that's exactly what we've done. For the cliff mesh spawn points, we add a new spawn point at the height of where the terrain would have been if the river wasn't there so that we can control where the top of the cliff is relative to the edge of the terrain near it. And that's these red spawn points you can see here. When I turn these back off, you can see we have cliff meshes that look as if they're the right height. You can walk onto them from this terrain here while still providing a nice kind of closed in gorge for this river. And actually, we were so happy with the results of adding additional spawn points around these gorgy areas that we decided to add more spawn points along the edge of normal rivers as well, so that we can get rocks right along the edge of the water to break up the silhouette between the terrain and the water. You can see those points here, and when I turn back on the scattering, you can see what that looks like. So as you can see, that really helps to break up the silhouette of the water, but also makes the whole area feel denser and more real. Another visual improvement I've worked on for the river is using more splines with the river modifiers. Instead of just a single central spline along the path of the river, we now have a spline for where each of the edges can be. And this gives us much finer control over how the terrain should dip down into the river, which is what actually matters rather than the depth at the middle for most cases. But it also means that we eliminate some of the effects we were getting at sharp bends. Uh, what we used to get at the sharp bend of a river was a pinching effect in the middle here where the terrain would jump from referencing a point somewhere here on the spline to referencing a point somewhere here on the spline. So you can see that they're basically equidistant from a point over here. So we'd either be referencing the terrain from one or the other without ever kind of passing through this middle bit. Now that we have uh, a spline for each edge, we can pick which edge is closer and then more closely reference that when picking the final height for that part of the terrain. And it just means that the edges of our rivers are much, much cleaner. We're le getting much less in terms of artifacting that we were seeing before. And the overall result is just a lot better, in my opinion. I'm really, really excited to see all of the new rivers come into 318 very, very soon. Put a lot of work into improving the visual quality of the rivers, as well as improving the tooling for our artists to be able to place more and more interesting rivers. Uh, our tech artists have been hard at work for the object presets for the for the rivers to make the make sure that we're getting really really cool distributions of objects around them and i just think what we're going to see in 318 is going to be a cut above what we've had so far and i'm really looking forward to it thanks all Since the last time we spoke about the PTV racetrack, it's been mostly just bug fixing. For the most part, it's been like the usual occasional uh, collision issue we had to fix up. Um, also, there was like instances where RQA testers just 
took the card and went off the off the track and like drove into the elevators and got into other parts of the level. So I kind of had to go around and fence off all the areas where people could leave the track. Um, also, just in some cases, on like inside the track, there was uh, little shortcuts that could be taken. So also these ones. <laughs> had to unfortunately block them off so nobody can gain an unfair advantage. One of the things we didn't discuss last time is where the buggies actually come from. So this, they're not something the players bring themselves into the space. There is this little side section of the track uh, where they spawn and you take them and then just kind of uh, bring them over to the, to the starting line and start from there. And when they're destroyed, then they basically respawn in that section again. So there's always eight buggies for the players. I can't wait to see what players uh, will do with it once they get it in their hands. Since the last time we spoke, Korea has changed a lot in its environment. Uh, we've been sort of building up and sort of breathing new life into it, making it on par with our, some of our other locations in terms of branding and sort of how we want the player to move through the space. With this, CS1 and 2, Crime Stat 1 and 2, are no longer going to be things that get you shocked or get you, you know, stop you from landing at a location. These finds will essentially just be like mini slaps on the wrists. Law enforcement will comment on them when they stop you and tell you to go pay your fines off, but they're not going to be as big of a, a meaning as they once was. Alongside this, we've also added uh, other ways for the players to get rid of their sort of criminality the fine kiosks that you can find all around now have a button that allows you to surrender to law enforcement this gives you the 20 percent discount uh, of your time served when you go into prison uh, and as always this is going to go live and we're going to continue iterating on it reading feedback and making improvements So when the first video released and um, we were talking about Klesha, I was watching HC Vertigo um, and he pretty much nailed the mission and who was given it. So uh, I'm not going to spoil it. I don't want to let you know. But uh, yeah, if you want to find out who it is, go check out HC Vertigo. Since the last time we talked about Klesha and the new updates to that, uh, things are going along nicely. We have AI walking about. Uh, they have loot on them. Uh, they're making the environment feel more alive the black spot is in the mission is working in the mission we've added roots coming out of the wall so that even though people might know how to beeline it out of there now they have to figure out how to get to this place they've never been to before and break the route they're normally used to and then have to rejoin which is the difficult part because we always make the rejoining bit harder and they can fall all the way down or you know whatever so that's it for the updates to Clasher. Uh, check it out when you get a chance How have the caves changed since we last spoke about them? Just some bug fixes and some polished work. Uh, so, yeah, they're done. So it's been a couple of weeks since the last time we talked about the Daymar crash site. And uh, since then, we've mostly been uh, polishing and debugging. We had a go-no-go -no -go, uh, during which everything went uh, smoothly. We actually noticed during playtests that the missions were too easy, so we just did some tweaking, we added some AI. On the level art side, they were working on some LODs, so how far the objects are going to display. Uh, we did the better navigation pass for AI and for the player, um, and I think we tweaked a little bit the cave, but there's just a crash chip in there, nothing else. We've also been working in uh, integrating all the missions. So there's going to be three missions on the Daymar crash site. There's going to be a kill specific, a kill all, and a delivery missions where you need to go in and uh, gather some loot uh, crates and uh, deliver them. Uh, we've also been working on uh, changing up the AI that's there because currently it's the Ninetales and we wanted to add a little bit more diversity in there. So we're working on adding in the Sand Nomads, which are probably not going to be here for this release, but possibly the next one. Since we last talked about the Siege of Horizon mission last week, 
Uh, I we forgot to mention, there's also some missions just coming to the islands that the Siege of Horizon takes place on. So these missions are going to take place on the islands when Siege isn't active. Uh, the missions we have you doing will take you from building to building, eliminating a number of enemies, or maybe taking out a, a high value target. These missions are currently just like a prototype, they're very basic, they're just kind of exploring what direction we want to go at for these and other islands. So these will be another small addition when 318 goes live. So there were some questions after we released our last ISC where we talked about hull scraping. And uh, there are some things that I can clarify from our position. So what makes a reclaimer more profitable or better for in, in comparison to the Vulture? For T0, there is no real difference. So the only difference there is you have more space to store your, your scraped off uh, hull material. But uh, the proper differences only come with Salvage T1. So once we talk about uh, munching and uh, actually uh, like converting proper ship debris into smaller bits, the size of the, the reclaimer is definitely an advantage here. Some comments were all, all asking about how can we use the scraper beam in an offensive manner. Technically you can, but uh, you have to make sure that the target ship has its shield deactivated. So as long as another ship is shielded, you will not be able to touch the hull because there is like this energy field that is protecting the hull. So there were also some questions on the repair side. And um, sadly, this repair iteration isn't the full fleshed out repair that you might need if your ship is fully destroyed. So if you lost a wing, the wing is lost. If you lost your engine, the engine is lost. So your your magically repair gun that right now is taking the hull material to create new hull material, so it, this gun isn't able to 3D print you an engine, a fully functional engine with all its, its parts. So what it does is just cover up of like your hull. So it increases your health of the ship again, but only to a degree where it is uh, reasonable in comparison to to what the hull actually stands for. So the material that you gather with the vehicle can be converted into the material that you use for your multi-tool to repair ships. There's one more thing. So we saw that um, you were already asking for what about players that are not interested in any combat scenario or in waiting others to shoot themselves to shreds and then picking up the debris pieces uh, for for profit from the hull scraping well we have a solution for 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 you and um well the miners of you might already know it so we we will expand our harvestable system uh, to also facilitate to spawn uh, fresh derelicts. And what are fresh derelicts? Basically, they are just the husks of uh, existing ships that uh, have a probability to spawn in asteroid fields or uh, basically uh, around all the Lagrange points. And uh, you will be able to find them uh, using scanning um, and then approach them like you would do with a mineable and then scrape off their hull. And that is coming in Alpha 318. So, what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that when you show a feature the very first week of the season, there's lots of room for additional improvements like we saw with River Tech. That QA can be just as squirrely as players when testing the arena racetrack. That Correa is looking pretty fresh with its Crusader makeover, and that changes to the law system will make Crime Stat 1 and 2 less troublesome to deal with in the future. In theory. And that while hull stripping won't be the offensive weapon some folks were theorizing, using the harvestable system to generate non-combat wrecks will be a welcome addition to the more peaceful-minded citizens out there. Now don't forget that CitizenCon is next Saturday, October 8th at 8 a.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. UTC. It's shaping up to be a really informative quarter day, and not just visual updates that you've come to expect, but more design and gameplay presentations that'll lead the way in the Star Citizen's future. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you next week at CitizenCon.